Hello everybody, welcome back to another Strength Materials video on critical buckling load. This one's super easy, but it's a great uh, concept problem in order to understand uh, effective lengths and buckling about two different axes. So the problem goes, uh, we have an A992 steel column, and it's considered pinned at the top and bottom. So here and here, and it's braced against its weak axis at the mid span or the mid height. And it wants us to determine the allowable force P that the column can support without buckling. And it wants us to apply, once again, that factor of safety of two, and it gives us all the important variables, Young's modulus and the moment of inertia about the x-axis and the y-axis for this column. Now, if you want to recall to some of the concepts on uh, critical buckling loads, effective lengths, and things like that, you can go back and click this video here. But in this one, we're just going to go quickly through uh, this problem and pretty much identify what's important. So for this column, it's pretty much just telling us that there is two ways that this column can buckle. It can buckle about this y-axis and it can buckle about the x-axis. And as you buckle about a specific axis, you need to consider a specific inertia value with respect to that axis that we're buckling against. And additionally, with these lateral braces, we are actually reducing the effective length of that buckling. And we're going to see that in this problem. So first, I want to start by looking at the strong axis. And to do this, it's super simple. All we need to do is think about which axis has the larger moment of inertia, which is the IX. So about the IX axis, we're actually going to be looking this way towards the column, looking at the web. So let's see what that looks like over here. Alrighty, so now we have a visual representation of what I'm talking about. We are now looking directly at the column with respect to this x-axis here, and we're looking directly at the web of the column. And we can notice that if we also take a top-down look, we are going to be moving left to right about that x-axis or buckling about that x-axis. And you'll also notice the shape of our buckling expected because there's no lateral bracing with respect to the x-axis -x -x that is preventing this shape from occurring, okay? So this is super important for these problems. You need to understand which variables we're plugging in with respect to what axis we're looking at and how many times this buckle will cross over the initial reference axis. But we're going to get into that in the next part of the problem. But for now, let's just look at what we need to solve for here. So we're looking for the critical buckling load with respect to x in this case, OK? So we have pi squared ei. And we know after this conversation, we are using IX here. And we have KL, which is super simple in this case. We know that KL from our previous video is simply equal to the effective length. K is going to equal to 1, since it's a pin-pin configuration. And our L is the entire length of this column here. So L is simply going to be 6 plus 6, which is 12 meters. Plugging that in, we are simply left with the following formula. We are given E, which is 200, times 10 to the 9 pascals, which is Newton meter squared. We also have the IX value, which is 87.3 times 10 to the negative 6, and that's meters to the 4. And this is all over KL. So we have 1 times 12, and that in brackets is squared. And that's going to leave us with a meter squared value. Solving this, you're going to get a Newton value, which converted to kilonewtons is going to give you 1,196.7 kilonewtons. So I'm going to bring this value over here and save it for later. Now, let's take a look at what the buckling is going to look like about the yy axis. Alrighty, so now we're looking about the yy axis. So what's going on is we're looking down the barrel of this y-axis and what we're seeing is the front of this flange of the column and we're also seeing these lateral braces that are involved here and at the mid span or the mid height what this what this is doing is creating a new buckling deformation a new shape that has to be followed based on these lateral braces and this is actually called your mode of buckling so this is inflecting if you will twice past this x-axis. So you have a buckle on one side and then a buckle on the other. This means your mode of buckling will be two. 
All right, so you have two of these shapes right here. And you can notice if we look top down, once again, about that yy axis, we're moving left to right with respect to this y axis. Now, if we think logically here for a minute, um, why do we need these lateral braces? It's because we are uh, supporting the weak axis of this column. Engineers understand that the weaker axis is always going to be governing if everything remains exactly the same for a column. So we tend to make things as equal as possible when we can. So we add lateral braces in order to reduce the effective length of buckling. Okay, so let's see how this affects our problem. We're going to be looking at the critical buckling load once again, but now we're with respect to the y-axis. So we are doing the exact same thing that we did before, except now we're using IY and KL on the bottom. Now, KL, once again, equal to our effective length. Our K, once again, is going to be 1 because we have a pin, pin, and we're going to assume that these braces are pinned as well. And we also have to think of the L. So L is now going to represent the length of a single buckled shape. So from one point to the other, with respect to the origin axis, where this crossover occurs is your limiting boundary for that new L. So our L is going to be equal to L over 2 in this case now. Okay, So we're going to be plugging that into our formula instead of what we had previously, which was the original length of the member. All right, so let's start plugging this in. It's all going to be very similar to what we've done before. So I'm just going to speed this up a little bit here. Now, plugging all of those values in, we are left with a final value of 1030.8 kilonewtons. And this is where we have to do some comparison. What is critical in this case? The critical load is going to be the lowest value that we can get from this formula. So comparing this to what we had for the critical buckling load about the x-axis, we can see that this is much lower. Therefore, this is going to govern the failure of the column. It would fail in this buckling mode uh, before it would fail about the strong axis, okay? So we're going to be taking this value as our critical buckling load. But before we solve this as our final answer, we need to divide it by what? Our factor of safety. So our factor of safety is given in this problem as an arbitrary 2, leaving us with a final value for the critical buckling load altogether of 515.4 kilonewtons. That's it. Uh, I hope these visuals helped with uh, understanding what's going on with different axis and different uh, effective lengths with respect to buckling. But once you are able to visualize these problems, they become a whole lot easier uh, and you can get through them a lot quicker once you know exactly what you're looking for, right? And exactly what to plug into. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. If this video helped you, feel free to leave a like and ask any questions in the comments below. If you want more videos like this, feel free to click the links on the screen.